Brooklyn Basement Podcast. We're back. We're back. We've been on hiatus. Why do you say that word? Yeah, the hi- hiatus is good. Yeah, the hiatus. hiatus is good. Yeah, yeah, we've been on hiatus for a little bit. You got we're a college back. degree. You should, you should know. No, no, no. But some of the words that, you know, I can't spell. It's been spell. a while. It's been a yeah, while. It's been a while. I can't spell Kosciuszko either. It's been forever. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but you've been down there a couple of times, right? <laughs> downtown Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, downtown Brooklyn. Hoist give away. I don't know how to spell it. Listen, we're back. That's what's Brooklyn important. Brooklyn Basement, we're here. Yeah. My guy, Willie Sweets. We have Mr. Picasso Vega with us. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. No, no, no. Thank you for coming. Picasso was once arrested for stealing high-end, expensive (laughs) art. First question is this. Why art? I'm sure there was jewelry. There was money. Well, I did take a lot of that too, but the art. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because I saw in one, in one one of the video clips that one of your first jobs, you left out the house with a bunch of gold. It was like... Well, this is the thing is, you know, uh, a lot of the people that I work with, a lot of people that are um, uh, the homes that I was in for the first 25 years of my life, they mm. had so much. I mean, they had safes that were bigger than most people's refrigerators, you yeah. know. Um, as a matter of fact, the heist that I got popped on, um, we were speaking about this earlier. Uh, after they arrested me, Another woman, her name was Lisa Jacobs. She's an art curator. She's the one who's in charge of selling all the artwork for the estate. Hmm. She's in charge of uh, praising it and taking care of it and all that. She sold a painting for them and she kept a million dollars. But they didn't know the million dollars was gone until they were researching my case. And they found the million dollars disappeared into her (laughs) bank account. Mm. Wow. You know, after I came out of jail, I found out that they uh, had uh, sued her. They did get the million dollars back and right. she had to pay court costs and all that. But how do you know any of it is missing right. if you right. just don't appreciate it as much? You know what I'm saying? Right. But artwork has a life of its own. Artwork mm. is something that right. lives and breathes, you know? Right. Where you begin at is kind of the end. We're going to do it like a, in those movies where they start at the end and then they bring it back to the, the beginning. beginning. <laughs> Let's bring it back to the beginning and lead us into when you got popped. You come from Brooklyn. What was that like? Growing up in Brooklyn, I grew up on the streets like everybody else. Immediately out of high school, I decided that I wanted to go into painting. But not just any painting. I wanted to do high-end painting. I wanted to do something that grabbed me, like, you know, that I wanted to go do every day. Not something that you go in and you dread. And the first apartment I went to at 19 years old on Madison Avenue, Mm. it was a $125 million apartment. The walls were covered in gold leaf, real gold leaf. The artwork in the apartment was worth a quarter of a million dollars. Just the artwork, not the sofas, nothing. (laughs) (laughs) And and how did you get into these apartments initially? The New York Times. I applied. I uh, was looking for a job as a painter, high-end painter. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just painting homes, not actual... No, just painting homes. And we were doing uh, doing some fancier stuff, but inside it was... Fancy apartments for very rich people. The minute we walked in, it was just this... Your your eyes would open up, your jaw would open up. Mm-hmm. There must have been uh, six maids, three maids on the first floor, three maids on the top That's floor. That's crazy. It's almost like... And this is just an apartment. It's not like this a full is an blo- apartment. Not like a mansion or nothing like that. <laughs> no. And these same people would have a mansion in East Hampton, boat docked out of Spain. They had a house in West Palm Beach. You know, it's just filthy money. It wasn't, you know, poor people. That right. Was, we weren't yeah, worth yeah, yeah. poor people, you know? So in some of these, they might be gone for like a month or two. You hit the nail on the head. I'm just kind of shocked that you said it like that. They're anywhere else but there. Mm. Right. You know, as a matter of fact, back in the 90s, they gave their son a wedding gift. And they flew out an Irish pub from Ireland, 1800s Irish pub. And they brought it up to Carmel, New York. And they gave it to him as a wedding gift for him wow. and his wife. So when rappers brag about buying out the bar, <laughs> so we, buy the bar. Be, we bought the bar <laughs> and moved it. <laughs> we flew the whole thing out. Yeah. yeah. One piece. Subscribe right f-ing now to Brooklyn f-ing Basement. Spider Cuz said it. And if you don't, you're going to be in the f-ing basement. Well, not wow. this basement though. Yeah, not this basement. Not, not this basement. basement. Not this one. You, did you go to school for art? I didn't study art, but I had. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that another thing that's changed in the generations is back in the day they used to take us to museums and operas right. and 
the BAM or the, you know, anywhere. Nowadays, kids don't go anywhere. <laughs> That's where you get your education from, right. is those field trips. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same world we live in anymore, is it? Because, you know, when you grow up poor, my mother was on food stamps. To be able to see stuff that you know you'll never be ever experience right. otherwise. Right. Ever. Yeah. Right, because it's pre-internet, so you're only getting the view of this outside world from this person that's there explaining the art to you. So you got this picture in your head, you just want to go and see it for yourself. Is that something you develop? The thing was, when I did the documentary, it was like going to see a psychiatrist, you yeah. know? Because, you know, there was a lot of things that came out that didn't, you know, I never even remember. The rape of my mother really damaged everything in my head that was at six six years old and you witnessed it i witnessed it oh, i was wow. standing there in the room um i wasn't in the room i was in the hallway it was dark my father was drunk he was always an alcoholic mm. but um that just like does did something to me you know mm -hmm. and it sent me on this like this quest to look for beautiful things paintings and nowhere can you capture beautiful except for like on artwork. Certain artwork can grab you. You know it. You can stand in front of something and it will just grab you like, wow. You know, it's just something that you can sit in and you can watch for days. And that's yeah. the one thing that caught me. And it was always the fact, I think, is when I, when I was young, watching the most beautiful thing in my life, which was my mother, be violated. It really shattered a lot, you know. You only seen beauty in pictures and you were looking for beauty in the world and that's what led you to fall in love with art. You started learning it on your own because you said you didn't go to school for it. See, that's where <clears throat> that's where it kind of gets tricky because that job that I was hired to, I was learning how to replicate fancy finishes. Mm. So kind of I was learning how to paint and I was learning how to do art and how to gotcha. make it look old. So it just wasn't just painting a wall like, oh, we want no. this black. Sometimes into... three three or four of us would stay in a room for like two months, oh. either to, to glaze it, to faux finish it, to sand it, to do whatever it was. But these are labor intensive finishes where right. you're putting level on top of level on top of level of paint. If he'd bring us a sample, we would color match it. Let's say it was from the 1800s. Mm -hmm. We'll color match it to make it look like it was from the 1800s. You mm -hmm. know, that's the way it's it not was. like now you can go to Home Depot, you give them <laughs> and they just throw yeah, it in right. the mixer. That's what we mixed it right there. And it had yeah. to be the perfect shade that if you put a drop on there, you wouldn't know we touched it. That's See, how good you are. Well, it's a super, yeah. and he gives you whatever paint is available. Yeah, I give him whatever the sample yeah. tells me, I give it to you. Semi Nothing matches. All I know is semi gloss is the kitchen. And the bathrooms, right? I think in the bathroom, so you can wipe it down. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is flat. So <laughs> there's more thought into the stuff that Jesus. you guys are doing. Right. It's a lot of thought into it, yeah. Uh, bathroom I did back in 1990. Mm -hmm. which was a long time ago. Right, right. And the bathroom, you could barely stand in it. Like, mm. literally, you stood there, there was a toilet, there was a tiny, tiny tub, but you could not turn around. And right. we charged almost $3,000. In the 90s. And it was always all expenses paid. They'd right. fly us to West Palm Beach. Um, I had a two-bedroom on the water, on the intercoastal. Hmm. You know, we were the kings as far as the painters are concerned. Right. You know, we didn't look... Like when I drove into the onto the property, my Mercedes, they always thought I was the owner. If you yes. pulling up in a hoopty in it, this your painter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't let him in. You know, so you had to fit in a little bit. What did that do mentally, as far as like where you wanted to be in life financially, or see? It's funny you put it in that in those words because I um... I'm a professional, buddy. <laughs> don't let the basement fool you. <laughs> I was always so poor. Like, so poor. Mm -hmm. And then to walk into a Madison Avenue apartment only made me appreciate it. But it never put goals in my head that I wanted to have that. Like, I didn't want... Yeah. I was okay with just visiting, you know? Okay. Um, the stealing of the artwork. Now, that's a different story. You know what mm. I'm saying? I just want to take some home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but right. <laughs> yeah. just because I went there, I didn't want to be like them. You know, I just, I don't know, I was happy being me, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, poor people could be happy being poor. And you so money doesn't much. make you happy, truthfully. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I could use a little bit more money to make me no, happy. We could, we could all use a little bit. But pay these gonna, bills, you know what I mean? It ain't going to make you happy. No, yeah. no, for the same thing, I mean, like, I was once a doorman on Park Avenue. I lived in Marcy Projects, worked on Park Avenue for over a decade of my life. So to go from rich to poor every day, like, every day. Eh, 
fucking terrible. I'm going back into these firewalls. Yeah, yeah but like, that's the way you really felt. Yeah, I felt like Jack. Like, wow, man, that was it. Was like then. I've... It's got to give you a little bit of that, man. I would like to have. more. Well, I didn't want what they had. Cause not what they had, but just want more for yourself and your family, and not struggle. You know what I mean? Oh well, yeah, that's the one. that aspect. Where not you don't want to be like anybody, but you know you want to be comfortable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I do. I want to be comfortable, yeah. Right, and that takes I just don't want to live, I don't want to live on Park Avenue. You know, I, I, I see, um, and this is over so many years of watching them, they got a lot of people living with them, maids, upstairs maids, downstairs maids, and maids that do laundry and this and yeah. that. But there's no happiness. Like, they yeah. were always so, you Miserable. know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the, I saw a millionaire become a billionaire. And then once the billionaire went bust, he went to millionaire, it wasn't the same. Hmm, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The guy's broken now. <laughs> yeah. We have when you used to a certain lifestyle and then you have nothing. You gotta be. <laughs> so for us, like, we ever get someone come back, hey, listen, we have fun, but we're comfortable here too. <laughs> we come right yeah. back to the base. We're here, we're good here. <laughs> we're all right with the roaches. <laughs> so you get into these apartments. When do you begin to have these ideas of, I want to take one of these home to women? The first day. The first day. Yeah, but you know why? And it was the first day, and it was like, I'll tell you, like it was yesterday. We were emptying out this Park Avenue apartment, getting the living room ready for painting. But they told us that the paintings that we were taking down, we're going to go to the basement, and new paintings were going to go up. Mm-hmm. So nobody's going to miss them. Right. You're like, wait, what? We're just going to swap out this. Picasso just gonna... for another Picasso? And this one's just going to sit in the basement by itself, lonely? I'll take care of it for you guys. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Charity. You got to know that if you get caught, you're going to go to jail. Did that even cross your mind at all? Well, that's when I started realizing that if I replace them, mm. if I put my... You see, I had so much freedom. Sometimes they leave me alone in these Madison Avenue apartments all day. And mm. I would do some crazy shit because it was for the adrenaline rush. Right, right. I'd take off my fucking, excuse my language, no, my yeah, painter's no clothes and I'd wash them. Yeah. And I'd be walking around in my underwear <laughs> for half the day, you know? <laughs> it was just a psychological rush. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? I don't live there. This is an apartment, like 3,000 square foot apartment with like 12 foot ceilings. And they had um, a Rembrandt painting. It was like 10 feet by 12 feet across. It was a massive, massive monster on the wall. It was this huge thing, but it was the freedom. Then you go back home and you're in this normal life. Well, by eight. (laughs) This is bullshit. <laughs> All right, let's let me give you one example. Um, I did the uh, I did the house for this guy that he was the CEO of Citibank. He had a nightstand that we had to move. I was the only one there, so I had to move it myself. And the nightstand swung open, and there was a stack. The stack was this big of hundred dollar bills, unwrapped hundred dollar bills. I must have taken two inches. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he said a couple of hundreds. He said two inches. <laughs> I swear to you, I swear to you that by the time I was done, there was six inches gone. <laughs> and nobody ever knew anything about anything. Right. Like it's so unrealistic. It's so crazy. Oh, uh, so <laughs> once you did that, when did you start strategizing on how to do it and applying some of the stuff that you learned in, in regards to like duplicating the art in order to swap it out. How did the ideas formulate into the final master plan? Well, it kind of went into a snowball. It started with me just taking the first one and then realizing that I could get caught. So maybe if I just replace my picture with their picture, you know, make a copy of it Mm -hmm. and make it look old, make it, you know, embellish it a little, put a few layers of paint on it, you know, make it look Mm -hmm. the way it was supposed to and put it back. I realized that if I did that, I could start my own collection. (laughs) Mm -hmm. With this shit. Yes. (laughs) Right. So, so when you took the first painting, it wasn't like I could make some money. You just, no, it wasn't, it was never about money because the money, you can't sell paintings like that. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, for the for the opening of the of the movie, the premiere, there was an FBI agent at the premiere, and um, they were checking out the movie, and they wanted me to answer some questions for them. They were actually learning about artwork, right? You know, but you can't sell art because there's uh, FBI has a special arts unit, 
that if they put in whatever name of the artist, whatever name of the painting, they'll find you in half a second. So there wouldn't be a private collector somewhere that's rich that's like, I just want to have it. No. <laughs> I you wish. Know, that's a that's, good movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> Write that down. We're going to make that movie. Too. <laughs> We're going to shoot it but in the basement. Let me tell you something that is true that people don't realize, right? Um, I was always a professional art thief. I mean, that's what I do. I, it's not, I'm, I'm not a professional painter. I don't consider myself. A, I'm, I'm still paint, obviously. But um, I realized that the biggest crooks, right? If you want to sell it, you don't sell things through the back door. You sell them through the front door. Uh, Christie's and Sotheby's, they sold anything I wanted them to sell jewelry wise. Mm -hmm. They would sell it on the front page, like, and mm -hmm. they knew it was stolen. You know, I had, if you look at some of the Sotheby's and Christie's magazines back in the 90s, we must have had, it was my wife and I, because I would give them to her as a present. Mm -hmm. And when she got tired of them, I'd say, why don't we sell them at Sotheby's or Christie's? <laughs> we put them right in the magazine and it'd be right on the front page of their magazine. And you wasn't concerned, like maybe no, the because owners you want to know why? Because they're crooked. Sotheby's and Christie's, they don't check uh, where the stuff comes from. As long as you represent, like you you owned it, right? Yeah, we'll believe you. But so it's best to get the well. wife to go as a female. You no, know? I always went myself. Oh, you went I always yourself. went myself. Yeah, with a jacket, I, Rolex, because oh, right. he knew what he was talking about. Right. I mean, I could tell you the jewelry down to the place setting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are Rolex diamonds. <laughs> it's a two-point setting tennis bracelet. <laughs> <Yeah. wrapped> in... <laughs> you took the first painting, you bring it back to Brooklyn? I uh, bring it back to Staten Island. But would you hang it up, wake up in the morning, having your coffee, just staring at it and being like, wow, exactly. I can't believe this thing is here. But I had told my wife that somebody threw it out. Was she familiar with art? Did she know? No, like, she this is know a... Most people don't know anything about art. Mm. She had no idea what she was looking at. She couldn't tell you a Monet from a Debuffet. How soon do you plot on the next? On the first job, I got paranoid because uh, when I put back my copy, I felt like it looked too new. Mm. You know, it was something in my head that I thought I was going to get caught, but it never came back. And then I realized that the painting that I replaced it with that was all a gallery like, collection. Like, my painting, mine, the one that I made. Oh, they want to put in your painting in a gallery? Well, it was always, it was a Monet painting, okay. a very small Monet painting. So my copy, I took a copy of it and I kept the Monet mm -hmm. and I put my Monet there. Wow. But then when we started doing the movie, I found out that the Monet still, the Monet that I have is still in that collection. After a while you start planning the second one, do you feel more comfortable the next time around? I think in the second one, I felt uh, a little bit scared just because of the thought that I could still get popped for the first one. It right. was too close together. But the problem is, I've had a lot of psychiatrists in my life tell me that I always jump on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I always felt guilty that like if I didn't take the painting now and I leave, I wouldn't be able to come back and take it later. Mm -hmm. And then you kick yourself in the ass for not taking it when you could have, mm. you know? Yeah. And it was like, you're in this empty apartment. You have so much leeway. Nobody's coming. You know, you got a, two weeks to finish this one apartment. You know, you could do whatever you want. It's like the devil whispering in my ear. Yo, just take that shit. Stop being stupid. <laughs> yeah. Was there ever a time you didn't pull the trigger and then you're just like, man, I should have taken it, man. I could have had it right now. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah, well, there was this one time. And it was just because I got caught undecided i um moved a huge footlocker with some very antique paintings from one corner of this basement to another corner to see if someone noticed <laughs> all right just to see if they would notice just that testing it moved. The water, right? yeah testing like a rat trap because so, they walk in and say wait who moved this thing here that yes you already know they're mindful of everything yes <laughs> and the maid comes down and i'm gonna go take it and she comes down behind me and i saw it in her eyes that she knew exactly what i was doing <sighs> and i was like oh i'm done i gotta go and i just left at that point you know she told her you know boss and no i don't think she told her boss 
that's the good thing about the, a lot of the maids is they're illegal aliens. Uh, so they, they don't want to get they involved lightly. Yeah, yeah. No hablo. No <laughs> yeah. hablo. But her eyes, her eyes yeah. said everything. Her yeah. eyes said, like, oh. No hablo, I see. <laughs> like you, you're not going to get me you. in trouble. Maricom, I see you. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they know they're the first ones to go down. Yep. They know they're the first one. They're not going to blame the highfalutin painter. Mm -hmm. They're going to blame the fucking poor maid is not from the country. That's <laughs> right. See, but there was this other guy, too, that I always took to my advantage, right? I worked with this Irish guy that he was an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. So he had a lot of faults, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, he always came in drunk. He mm -hmm. was a bum. He was always broke. So I always knew that. I could always fall back on that. Like, <laughs> if, um, oh, shit, there's something missing. They Isaac would never it. think yeah. it was me. They right. would think it was him. You know, right. obviously it was him. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Check this out. And this is the truth. And it, this is because we've already passed the statute of limitations on this, but we're in Charlie Gibson's apartment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Gibson's the anchor for, I believe, ABC. He mm -hmm. was retired now. But anyway, I had Jack the piece from there. Beautiful, spectacular piece. Like, it was the front cover of Christie's. There was this Mexican guy, his last day. It was a Friday, and he wanted to get out of there. So on that day is the day that I jacked it. Mm -hmm. Because that day, it was his last day. We were never going to see him again. Right. The Monday morning, I walk in, and the cops are standing right there by the front door. And they started talking to me. They said, yo, did you see anything, you know, d different? I said, oh, no wonder. <laughs> yeah. I let them down the hallway, you know what I'm saying? That's the way you lead people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no wonder he was acting suspicious, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then he was here too long after we left. <laughs> you know, that was it. You know, yeah. it was sent He asked me something about Mexican food, and I was like, no. And then, I don't know, officer, you know, he started turning him a whole different like, direction. No wonder some driving a Benz this morning. <laughs> he he came on the bus on Monday. <laughs> That's terrible. No. So at one point, your living room must look like a museum of art then, right? You have all oh, these yeah. paintings. Your wife would be like, wow, they throw a lot of paintings <laughs> by your job. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, well, you know. Let's you know, move it out, babe. Rich people stuff. I don't know. You know it happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, you probably collected like $3 million worth of paintings. Let's just say it's a lot. Mm. And now, do you think to yourself like, man, I should probably stop because this is getting out of hand. It never occurred to me. That's well, why I got popped. I mean. Right. But wait, let me give you a, a for instance. Okay. When I got popped... They executed a search warrant. They arrested me in Kings Point, Long Island. Mm -hmm. And they executed an instant search warrant in Pennsylvania where my where the mother of my girls was. She was in, in this house. Mm. And they walked by all my artwork that was hanging on the walls. This was SWAT. They all walked by all the artwork, <laughs> oh all my. stolen artwork. Yeah. And they left it right there. That's hilarious. They had no idea what they was looking for. Why, why bother? <laughs> You know what it is? Because they probably didn't know them. That's ugly. They, they can't yeah, do right? that. Yeah. A lot of that high-end stuff is like... Weird. Weird, uh, yeah. Especially like the, some of the abstract stuff. There's stuff that you look at and you be like, yeah, no, I wouldn't have been able to do that with my crayons. That's for sure. Right. That is not a marker. It's not paint by numbers. That's for right. sure. <laughs> you ultimately got popped. How many years and how many paintings do you think you collected in that span? 35 years. 35 62 years. paintings. Did most of them come at the early stages? They came almost like 12 a year almost mm. for, for a certain time. And then I stopped for a while. Was there any point where you started getting word back? Never. So never, that's why ever, just ever happened. Not even the gold or the diamonds or any of that. None of it. Like, it just went into thin air. Go figure, right? That's crazy. Well, then I guess go figure, right? They, at the very last time when I got pinched, right, they had so much video surveillance because the cameras were inside all the heating vents and all that. Mm, okay. But they still needed a confession. Like, I don't get that. Like, you already got all that surveillance. Right. You know, why do you need me to confess for? It took 18 months, bro. But wasn't it also that there was other paintings around that time coming up missing or there were heists and stuff and maybe they were just trying to get one person and to attach it to well they did they attached them all to me so we found the the serial killer of paintings yeah, right? they... <laughs> yeah. everybody can sleep safe now they want the confession because the last thing a rich person wants is to put a poor man in jail that doesn't belong there no they don't give a fuck 
No, they don't care. No? They especially want this poor man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Make an example of him. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's terrible. The Brooklyn DA was a TV show or reality show that was created to capture criminals and their activities, which they featured you on, right? Mm -hmm. In three different episodes, right? Yep. How did they figure out that it was you? Um, several weeks before I got arrested, maybe a month and a half before I got arrested, my ex-wife calls me up and she says, uh, some detective or some police officer called my brother-in-law and was asking about me or something to that effect or asking about a check or something. That was the first red flag. Hmm. But then the second red flag was I get home and I see this minivan. I lived in a country setting, but I see this minivan parked right across the street from my house. And it set off a red flag. So I didn't pull into my house. I drove down to the end of the block. Mm -hmm. You'll see me come back up the block in my Mercedes because I spotted them parked on the front of my house. I go, I parked, pulled into my house, and I cut down all my ganja trees. I had like 27. <laughs> you panicked. Because yeah. I already knew they were there. I already, right. They're not stupid. I mean, come on. They should have just put a badge on the window. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I've seen this movie before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. The guy pretending to fix the phone lines. <laughs> After that point, man, I already knew. I already knew they were coming. It just was a matter of time. It was. But the problem was the weed that morning. I smoked two blunts of exotic mm. weed. Really good weed. And when I got over there, I had a lot of red flags at the state. So you were smoking weed to what would be your final job. Yep. So you wasn't on point the way you normally would. No. And so things that probably would have normally Don't gotten your attention, you just dismissed it and proceeded. Yes, I did, brother. The worst part was the doorknob. There was this doorknob mm -hmm. to the rest of the estate. Now, we have full access to everything. Like, we're privileged like that. I touched that doorknob, and that doorknob was locked. Mm, that's when you should have known. <laughs> and you're like, why is this? Yeah, In the back of your mind, I you're said. like, damn, that's odd, but you still. I still went for it. But this is after, you know. <clears throat> All right, you have to understand. This is the third robbery of the same mansion. Not by you, but. By me. Oh, that the was third a, robbery. Of the now, had you done mansion. that prior to that, go back to. But they didn't catch me on none of the other ones. They caught right. me on that one piece of artwork that I sold. I, the time that I was previously there, I took a piece of artwork. I held on to it for like six months or a year. Hmm. And then I got rid of it in California. So there were a couple that you were able to sell. Just one. Okay. Just one. In 35 years, just one. And that's the one that they caught me on because they traced the check. Even though I laundered the money through Shell Company and all that, they still traced it back and they got it back to me exactly where I was Oh, at. that's what the detective was inquiring about, your yep. wife with the money. And yep. By that mm -hmm. time, they were locked in on you. Yeah, they were really all locked in. All it took in. was one sale. But they only recovered paintings that I took on that day. They didn't recover any other paintings. And you know what the follow-up question is? <laughs> <laughs> you, you do know that I got charged for those those paintings. You got charged for them, but you say they didn't they didn't find all of them. No. So. <laughs> well, we'll have to find that. Oh, we're gonna see a Rembrandt on the back <laughs> of the basement ones, <laughs> or a replica the back of the Brooklyn podcast. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it right here. A replica though. We don't want the real one. <laughs> yeah. We don't need a sting operation done on us. Everybody free! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! It's not real. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the real book. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to ask in a gentle way. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to say yes. I'm going to leave it at that. Yes. Uh, I have an obsession I, to, to keeping my artwork. Okay. So I let's mean, just say hypothetically, said, there's this, a possibility yes. that is the word you may have one in a, you know, tucked away that you tucked away yeah. that you visit once in a while. Like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> it's potential. Yeah. yeah, it feels good when you sit around and they you just admire what you've done. <laughs> mm. And then when you think about that, nobody's missing them. Then that makes it even sadder, I guess, in a way. Wow. You know, know, nobody really loved you guys. Wow. Yeah. yeah right. You. I love you. Do you talk to them? Like, I love you. Like, like. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Was the guy from Beach Motel who used to talk to his mom all the time? Yeah. Dude, yeah. dude, I hate to tell you this, but yeah, I talk to my artwork, yeah, yeah. because you see, I have a different uh, perspective, right? You know, and this is just getting, you know, 
artwork when when an artist puts everything into their artwork but i mean a real artist not right. not someone who calls himself an artist right. you, you know you feel like it has a bit of their soul in there yeah it does it has um some art most artists are very sad i mean they're broken they're, they're, we're, we're yeah. all messed up but right. uh if you look at some art, it'll make you cry. Like if hmm. I mean, I would love to bring you to a museum so you could see it through. Listen, my eyes. I'm not You'll... walking in no museum with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna get put on the FBI list just because you want to tell me how show me how you cry. I'm when, good. When I go to <laughs> maybe museum, Will is up to it. He's a little. I more. usually tell them I'm, I'm an art thief. I usually tell them so that way they understand. You know what I'm saying? I'll steal your shit. You know what but... I'm saying? I'll take it. And do you know, you, do won't... you get tempted still. I am very tempted because I think about it that I could take it. I could still take it and you're right. not gonna get it back. Do you think that you might want the hammer the door? Hammer the door down. Yeah. One <laughs> one last hurrah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer the door down. Yo, fetus, if it's missing, <laughs> you know who we gotta find. If the door is gone <laughs> next week. On the table. All of a sudden, like, wow, this Wow, it's a plain old faces, white table. Yeah, these faces look happier. <laughs> Where's the fucking eyes? There's yeah. no eyes on this thing. It's the ones that shake the eyeballs that, from the dolls. Oh. It'd be a whole other replica of the whole thing. That damn Picasso, I should have known. <laughs> I knew he was going to take the art table. The table. He kept saying it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, he was sitting before we started shooting. He was sitting there. was like, wow, man, that door. And what kind of hinges are those? <laughs> He took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I was like, no, it's bolted on. <laughs> like, no, they're weld on. They can't get a Picasso. Leave it alone. Yeah, we're going to see a construction about it. crew outside tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom call us one day and be like, look. <laughs> look, look what I see. <laughs> yeah. Does this look familiar in your history books? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's taking pictures behind yeah, the door. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is that you can't give those away when you die. Mm. Well, obviously, you can't do anything with it other nothing, than nothing. it's your own personal gratification. Unless right. somebody, yeah, unless somebody knows, like, let's say you were an art, uh, an aficionado, and you were like, yeah, you know, give them to me, I'll yeah. watch them. Another psychopath right. like yourself, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it has to be. Yeah, now, has to be, be honest. The, 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 in getting therapy and stuff like that, they want them to say maybe you should have be taking medication or. No. Is there voices in your head? And you Well, know? there's always voices in my head, wow. but those are God and the devil. God and the devil. <laughs> but God has been louder. I don't know. When you go to like a Walmart, do you steal the picture frames with people? <laughs> no. Like the family, you're like, let me just <laughs> practice. See if I still got it. <laughs> That's one thing I never understood. Yeah. I never understood why people can go into like a Walmart or a Home Depot and shoplift. Like right. you should steal something with purpose. Right. Do you Maybe. still paint for like high-end apartments? No. Though? So no, as a matter of fact, now I just paint for regular people, poor right, people. Right. Yeah. The average person. <laughs> the average person, yeah, that yeah. could afford like a two thousand dollar rent. So when you walk in the basement, you're like, wow, this place could use a coat or two, right? <laughs> like, no, I just there's, there's it has no character, peeling right? paint. And there's no peeling paint. It's right. flat yeah, paint. Yeah, yeah. We pest inspection. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> there's a union job here. Don't worry about it. We're good. <laughs> no, this is no union job. Oh no. For the podcast, it's a union job. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get us. We're talking about it after hours. So then you get caught. It's a big deal. You you make national news in the state. International. International news. Yeah, when I look in front I of the Tokyo, Daily News, Taiwan, the, the other York guy, Coast. they made you look like uh, what's that movie? Uh, Gotti. He was in no, the like. one that, that was about the guy that used to steal paintings and stuff like that. They used to steal them from museums, though. I forgot. Anyway, yeah. oh, I know who you're talking about. As they, a they, fact, they're actually was... uh, guys like yourself that would steal paintings. And keep them from themselves. I only found this out as I was researching some of your stuff. Not like I'm knowledge, but basically they use that as a, a nickname for the guys yes. that still paint things and don't sell them. They just keep it for the thrill of having them. Yeah, it. for the adrenaline rush. Right. Mm. And that's why he has some. No, maybe. For, maybe. It's, that's why it's said like that. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. But we definitely don't know. We don't you know. know one day, I think I'm just gonna send out a bunch of copies of the keys to the place where I have them, mm -hmm. and just if somebody goes and picks them up, they take them. Like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, kind of right. Makes the keys around yeah, if you get the right key. Right? <laughs> Money. <laughs> Raffling off free yeah. keys. There's like one real key every twenty keys. You know what I mean? Somebody ends up with Picassos and the mm. buffets and uh. so. They do the sting operation. Obviously, you still have no clue. Nothing's wrong. Everything is normal. Now you're driving back home. They run up on you, and you realize, oh. They got me. They got me. Yeah, but it took me a minute. See, it took me a minute because 
um, I'm that good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like there was no reason for them to pull me over. Right. Almost 30 years, you said doing yeah. this. Yeah. If you look at the if you look at the reality show, everything I'm telling you is is recorded. You look at the reality show. I get out, and they ask me where am I coming from and all the stuff. And they said, "Do you know why I'm pulling you over?" I said, "I have no idea why you're pulling me over." I didn't know why they were pulling me over. Besides, there were three paintings in the back. Got out of the car. I didn't have a clue. I was right. Just taken aback. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Did they automatically tell you you're under arrest? Yeah, they told me I was under arrest. They took me back to the Nassau County uh, Station House mm -hmm. where there was like 30 detectives around a huge table. Mm -hmm. And um, they showed me some pictures. That's when I knew what was going on. When mm -hmm. they showed me the pictures of other artwork that was missing... And I had never seen... I mean, I saw the other artwork. I had pictures... The first time I went into this house, the very first time, I had pictures of every inch of every piece of artwork that was hanging on the walls. I still do, you know, because I took pictures of everything. I wanted to document it for myself. But um, I had no idea. Once they showed me the pictures, I knew that, oh, shit, they're asking about the paintings. They're in the trunk. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Have uh, you seen these? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Some of the pictures that you saw that weren't the things that you took, do you get jealous? Like, man, I wish I would have had that one right there. Nah, but I kind of knew that he was kind of paying me back. <clears throat> you see what he um, probably did was just threw him in the garbage. You he just wanted to make sure when they did get you, it was they enough get to... Me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Probably insured or some sort. Oh, let me tell you something. The insurance is the whole thing that makes it the point. They're not worth even uh, a fraction yeah. of what yeah, yeah. You know, they're insured for. It's almost like a made-up number. Yes. Right? If, I, if he was the appraiser and I was his buddy, he could hook me mm -hmm. up with good, nice prices, and then it disappears and I get the money. Hmm. So it is what it is. How much can we get for this thing in the background right here? <laughs> Walmart or found that. you said you found that? I said I think you found that, right? Um, I, you I won't that. say anything about it. You oh, you're trying to be you trying to be nice. <laughs> in case I in no. case I did paint it. Did maybe, you? Maybe. No, you didn't. You don't know what I did. But I do know that those hinges come off pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> There's only two of them on there. Yeah. <laughs> you're hammering them right out. <laughs> Take the hinges up. <laughs> I'm going to go get a ham in the car, Lloyd. <laughs> Flathead of the ham. I'll be right back. So when you get caught, you got John Gotti's lawyer representing you. Bruce Cutler and Donald Trump's lawyer, Timothy Parker. So you have a high-profile lawyer. Well, they took it for the for the, for the the publicity. They didn't yeah. take it for the... Because he had no money. They had yeah. no money. Right. You Trust couldn't me. bail yourself out with a Rembrandt or nothing like that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> be like, listen, uh, there's like two extra ones over there in my basement somewhere. Dude, no, I wish, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. <laughs> and now you're facing 20 years in jail. 26. 26. <laughs> over a million dollar bail. Are you thinking, I'm probably never going to come home? No, I wasn't thinking that. What, why is that? When I walked into Rikers Island, I, this is going to sound corny for non-believers. And, you know, I never been to jail. I right. never got arrested. I'm not that guy. Right. Mm. You know. When I got there, everything, it was like the, the red carpet opened up and the doors swung open and it was a different experience, you know, for me in every way, like, you know, lawyer, once I got the lawyer, the lawyer kind of made everything easier for me. Right. Um, he gave you that confidence. Like, Don't worry about yeah, this. We're like, gonna beat everything's this. Everything's fine. You're good. You know, chill out. That's all it was. Just and don't do it again. Pretty much, that's what it was. Yeah. But just don't but, do it while I'm representing you. Yeah, yeah and it, it was just like God, I was okay because God was there. You know, he had my back. Let me tell you something. How do you get someone that's in Rikers Island, no money? I was uh, the, the day after I was about to hang up, which means commit suicide in my cell. Hmm. Um, I wake up that morning to someone knocking on my little window, the little plate glass window. They're banging on the window. And they're like, yo, Picasso, you're on the front page. And my face was on the front page of the Daily News with Picasso on top. Hmm. It was God telling me, you know. You're good. You're good. Chill out. And <laughs> that was it. Yeah. You know, I understood. You know, it, it took that. Like, he couldn't call me on the phone. God can't call you on the phone and be like, yo, right. you're good. Yeah. 
The only way he could reach me was the front page of the Daily News with Picasso right on yeah. top. Cause God doesn't have dial up at that time. He had cell phones already. He was yes, like, he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daily News was a speed dial. Yeah, yeah. It was right, the and Daily the New News. York Post and the Wall Street Journal, the New Yorker, the New York Times. Did I mean, that give damn. you an, another boost? Rush Ooh. of adrenaline. Oh, he was yelling at people right as out of that. At that point, give me a fucking cigarette, yeah. dude. That's a fact, though. <laughs> but not for cigarettes. But yeah, I was I was going off. I was losing, you know. I had to go for a different adrenaline rush because when I got locked up, I didn't have anything. So, right. you know, um, my adrenaline rush in there, once everything was good, though, this is not me just popping off. Right. right. Once everything was good, I found um, a niche in my head. Um, like one time we're watching TMZ and I'm sitting up front by the TV and there's this huge monster guy and they call him Grande. He's a big uh, gang member, whatever. But he said, yo, Picasso, get your fucking head out of the way. And I felt disrespected. <laughs> so as soon as everybody locked in, then now this guy would have washed me and killed me right. 10 times over. Yeah. Everybody locked in. I couldn't let it go, you know, and I confronted him. Now, nobody normal does shit like that, but right. I needed the fix. You know what I'm saying? I needed that adrenaline, bro. <laughs> and it felt so good to be like, to get this huge monster guy to back down. Yeah. Oh my God, it was like stealing a painting. <laughs> <laughs> what I would have done is drawn a picture of me beating him up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't let art become life. You know what I mean? Like, paint the visual. Like, oh shit, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, at some point I felt him click off. Like, you know what? I just don't want to. Right. Yeah, I just don't. Picasso's... And he probably like, this guy's pretty, uh, gotta be a psychopath to be running yeah. up in people's cribs and not give a fuck about nothing. <laughs> You took it to trial, right? No. Uh, the day that it was supposed to start our trial, the judge told my attorney that he didn't want the case going to court because the DA already had committed a felony. In order for him to find out that the million dollars was missing, he took records from a subpoena in Brooklyn and gave them to Long Island or something to that effect, and that was a Class D felony, which should have meant the whole case should have been dismissed. Yes, right. But that's never what happens. So, mm. do you didn't get probation? Nothing. You Nothing. Um, they said if you plead guilty right now, we'll let you go. But when you plead guilty, did did uh, I plead guilty to everything? Right. So you do have the felony to of a lot of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said all of them. <laughs> I think there's like 21. But think about that. I got arrested right. once in 35 years. You know, yeah. what's the likelihood it's ever gonna happen? Are you trying to convince yourself that? You can... No, I just know the way it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just the way it is. You know. God's so, good, right? Well, I, God is a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know? Well, he was great to you. <laughs> yeah, <he was> not <laughs> good. <laughs> you, better, <laughs> you better use a better word than good. God is not going to like that one. We should actually hold hands on this. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you could paint a better picture than just good. <laughs> Jeez. Zess. Yeah. Zess. The most magnificent, maybe? You know what I mean? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at that moment in time, I saw you speak on it in the documentary. You wasn't going to continue anymore because of your daughters. What was that thought process? Uh, the first time I met my daughter, uh, Brianna, um, I met her in Nassau County, in a Nassau County courtroom. Mm. And um, she was just born. And in order for me to get permission to walk over to her to look at her, mm. Uh, my lawyer had to ask the judge, and it was uh, pretty humbling when you look at your newborn daughter inside a courtroom and you realize that you're her father. You know, it's like, uh, it's very disappointing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you don't know what excuse to come up with for why you're letting yourself down. At that point, I changed my whole life. It was mm -hmm. a wake-up call. Having that that uh, that emptiness, my father not being there was mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it was, it was a luxury I didn't have. And I want my daughters to have that luxury. I want them to be able to call me. You know, I just want to be there for them. For any little, any, anything that they want, I want to be there for them. I don't right. want to ever spend the day away from them. I mean, that's, for me personally, it's night and day. When I'm with them, you know, it's like God sent down two angels to be with me and guard me, and I couldn't... I mean, I'm not the same person I was. You right. know, they, they changed me, you know, mm -hmm. incredibly. There goes God again. <laughs> yes. That's working. a fact. That's yeah. a fact. It's working and showing you the reality of life. 
And I am coming out with my own artwork. I am going to be doing my own line. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. It'll be a limited edition line. But um, it's where I'm really going to... It's going to be a transition. It's going to be like a... Uh, my sins are going to be converted to artwork, if that makes any sense to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. You know, because I think sense. art has to mean something. And for me... Yeah. Everything I've done wrong has to be made right. And the only way it could be made right for me personally is to confess it right. and tell the truth about it. And maybe it also, maybe somebody else sees this and somebody else takes something else out of it that we don't. <clears throat> you know, I have no idea. But confession is good for the soul. That's all I know. So, so people that don't know you, where the, the docs, where, where, where is it on? Where is it on Prime, Amazon? Uh, the Tubi? movie, The Picasso of Thieves is on Amazon Prime. Okay. It's on Tubi. It's on um, several other streaming platforms. Okay. The Brooklyn DA is on Amazon Prime, and I'm in episode one, two, and three. And I'm on all social networks, TikTok, True Social, YouTube, you name it, I'm on there. Picasso, I appreciate you, Chairman. Thank you for, Thank you for coming. Did man. you this enjoy yourself? Great. Did you have fun? Absolutely, you sure? I hope you invite me back okay. when I have my art so I could show you. Oh, absolutely. Fine, yeah, man. absolutely. And we're going to work on these hinges well, <laughs> as soon as you leave. So don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's pretty heavy. It's a it's, fire, it's though. It's heavy. I think so. Yeah. It's a fire, though. You, you have fun. Don't worry about it. We're taking the door with us. <laughs> I know for a fact I could sell that at Christie's. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, um, you Not see that peace. little statue right there? That little man right there? Yeah. That's our friend and past guest of the podcast. His name is Danny Cortez. His art is actually at Sotheby's. So he makes miniatures of old, yeah, like, New yeah. York stuff, mailboxes, telephone I stuff. No, is yeah. he the one on YouTube? That yeah. He's on everything. He's on. He's pretty big on Instagram, but so, you know. He gave us a statue of, of himself. Speaking of Sotheby's and all that. So he was here. He That's left funny. that. Well, I think we stole that from him. No, he gave it to us. He, he, gave, it to he us. gave it All right. So come on. Right away, we he stole it to us. He gave it to oh, us. So we had two great man. artists here on, on Brooklyn so Basement. Or, you know, one's the artist, one stole the art. So... <laughs> <laughs> Either way, they, they're in the same building. <laughs> yeah. so it was a very constructive conversation. No, no, definitely. Dude, wait, you know, just a fun fact. Go ahead. Since the movie came out, I've had a lot of people offer for me to steal artwork that they know is valuable, but they can't steal it. Mm. You don't think that's strange? Yeah, trying to that's the Brooklyn DA trying to sit you up again. That's what that sounds like. That sounds like a new Probably reality show. Way. If they go, so where would you hide this if you had this? <laughs> then you know, then you know something's wrong. Yeah, right, those guys are not street guys. <laughs> but listen, Picasso, what we ask of every one of our guests at the end of every episode is to look into the camera and just say how this is the best, the most adrenaline rush, uh, more valuable than any piece of art that you've ever stolen. You know how honored you are to be here tonight, and uh, you know all those great things into the camera. You didn't say your name. Right? Brooklyn podcast. Yes, hey, Brooklyn, 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 Brooklyn basement podcast. This, this is the most amazing. This is the Rembrandt of of podcasting. This is truly yeah. the the Picasso of all my interviews, mm -hmm. and I had already given up doing uh, podcast interviews, but. Uh, there was no way in hell I was going to miss the Brooklyn Basement podcast. Because right. this is like Sotheby's here, right? Yeah, this it's is Christie's. a lot like Sotheby's and Christie's <laughs> right here. Forget about it. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me on the podcast. This was one of the most mm -hmm. uh, fruitful. Abstract. Use some art words. Like abstract? The most abstract interviews I've ever, I've yeah, ever yeah, been yeah. on. And because then you guys came at me from every which direction. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. where you guys were coming at me from. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, we're, art, we're artists. In this, you know what I mean? Yes. Brooklyn Basement Podcast. Will, you already know. Another episode. We out of here. Another episode. Thank Picasso, you again, catch Picasso. Catch him on all yes. the TikTok. Picasso Vega on all the... Just Google them. Right. Like, follow, and share on there Instagram, yeah. Facebook, TikTok, yep. True mm -hmm. Social, YouTube, you name it, I'm there. Yeah. Indeed, because he's selling some paintings. Indeed. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we'll let you guys know when we're going to raffle those keys to the missing uh, pieces. Brooklyn Basement Podcast. Truth. <laughs> we out of here. Peace. Peace.